Okay, overcoming obstacles. So here are some of the obstacles that we experience as coaches, and I'm just going to ask you guys now, don't go there. I don't want this screen to be the last one you see on this call, so please stay. Um, so here are some of the obstacles that we experience as coaches, some of the discouragements that we see happen. And I'm sure that every single one of you can pick out some of those that apply to you. Um, me, for example, when I made this decision, I was like in early labor with my third baby, and I called my mom and I told my mom that I was going to do this. And she's like, are you insane? You have two kids and you're going to have a newborn. You can't do this. You can't do this, says my mom. And um, in terms of criticism, I, I am from a corporate background. I went public with what I was doing um, with coaching. I received a lot of criticism there. People had had bad experiences with different companies and um, there was a lot of really harsh criticism. So I definitely identify with some of these, but what I want to talk about is overcoming these obstacles. What I want to talk about is persistence despite these obstacles. And I really think that the key to being persistent the key to moving forward no matter what happens is to have a really, really strong reason why you're doing this. So on those nights when my baby woke up every two hours, that child was hungry. And it would take him 40 minutes to nurse. And so I slept in little tiny chunks of time and, and I woke up still early in the morning to get my new stuff done because I had a really, really strong why. For those of you who don't know me, I come from um, I come from a poor background. My family moved to Canada when I was four, and I'm one of eight children. So my dad worked and made minimum wage for years um, in, in this new strange land. Um, I'm in Canada, by the way. And um, I got married when I was 18. My husband and I were both 18 when we got married. And I remember having $40 a week to go grocery shopping with. And we just had this big mindset. We had this big change where we really wanted more for our family. We really wanted to offer our kids the opportunity to go to school anywhere they wanted to go to school and price shouldn't be an object. So that's part of my why power, but having a why, I, I've heard Barbie say, have a why that makes you cry, and I really think when you establish the reason that you're doing this that makes you emotional, you've found your why power, and you're going to find that reason to persist and to continue what happens. Those are just going to be little bumps on the road. Okay, so I want to talk about my girl Karina. Um, she has lost 55 pounds. I am so proud of this girl. Um, she's a diamond coach now as well. And she's got two kids. She's definitely overcome a lot of obstacles in her coaching journey. So what we want to talk about is how she got to diamond, um, some of the obstacles that she encountered, and um, um, how she over them. So I am going to turn it over to my girl. Karina, I'm just finding you. There you are. Okay. You are presenter, darling. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you see me? Just a sec. There I am. There you are. Yes. Hi. <laughs> So I'm Karina. Thank you for the introduction, Rosa. And I'm um, going to share just briefly with you about my journey, how I got here, and how I completely understand when you feel like it's just not going to happen. Because let me tell you, getting to Diamond for me didn't just happen. I worked my butt off and kept missing it, um, to be honest. 
and uh, then finally achieved it. So a bit of background for me, for my why, um, and I only tapped into the real why that makes me cry um, a couple weeks ago on a call with Barbie and Rosa and two of our other leaders. And um, my family was always low income. I grew up in a, like my parents were, I always called them like the first of the teen moms because my mom was 16 or 50 when she found out she was pregnant with my brother and 17 when she had me. Um, and her and my dad, um, they got married and they did the very best they could and they were incredibly hard working parents. And, um, but that being said, we still had very little. We often had breakfast for dinner because eggs was the cheapest thing to get in us um, that was still good for us. So they made it through. Um, my grandpa helped them buy their first home and we were doing okay. Um, and then when I was 13, um, my dad passed away really unexpectedly. He was only 32 years old when he died. So that left my mom a widow at 31 years old with me, um, 13, my brother was 14. And after he passed away, she found we had piles of credit card debt that she had never known about, um, that he had sort of not meant to keep hidden from her, but that he thought he had control of. So she was in a pretty bad spot. She made it through. We had um, tons of help from our church. It seemed like there was always something that came through right at the right time for us. Um, my mom met my stepdad, and they got married, and he had an awesome job. And he took care of us, and he took a take her on vacations, and uh, he really provided for us. But um, two years ago, my stepdad walked away from our family. Um, he was a gambling addict and an alcoholic, which I didn't know. Um, and he left my mom bankrupt to the point where they ha she had to foreclose on their home. And um, so my mom's now 50 and starting over again. And um, so that's a huge part of my why is just the constant struggle and that I don't want that for me and I won't want it for my family and I don't want it for my mom. So that's a bit of that background. <clears throat> also because my dad passed away when he was so young, um, I know the value of that relationship of a, a father in your life. My husband is a bit older than me, a few years, 14 to be exact, and we have two little kids. My, my daughter's almost four, my son just turned two. And I want him to have every possible moment with those kids. I don't want him at work every single day. I want him home. My goal is to retire my husband. So April 2013, I became a beach body coach. And I was in it just to lose weight and get a discount on my Shakeology, to be perfectly honest. Um, I didn't know there was money to be made until, uh, <laughs> until I got my first check. I had a couple people I talked to about the program, and they bought it off me. Like, I sent them to my site. I didn't even know what I was doing. And I got a check in the mail, and I thought it was a bill. And I'm like, they have my credit card. What do they want from me? Um, but it was a check for $90 for selling two challenge packs. And I was like, okay, I just made money without trying. What would happen if I tried? So I started trying, and I haven't stopped trying, and I won't ever stop trying. Um, and it's going really well now. But it took so much hard work to get there, and it still takes hard work. That's kind of the thing with this job. You can't quit. You can't not plug in. You can't just ignore your page for days and expect things to work because they won't. Um, so for me, um, obstacles, you know how they say to sign up your husband or your spouse or partner because that will get you closer right away? Yeah, put them on the right leg because I didn't. So my husband was on my inside right leg. That's not going to do me any good. Um, so I had to like cancel his coach account try to move him but then they changed the rules on that and you can no longer anyway it's a bit of a kerfuffle with that but I'm like no that's just another thing that's going to get in my way I'm not going to let it so I plugged on through I had coaches that came to me new people that were like oh this looks awesome I want to do what you're doing and they seemed like such go-getters and I was so stoked that these people wanted it as bad as I did and you know what they were so so excited but they lacked a teachable spirit and I couldn't help them. They didn't want to hear it. They wanted to reinvent the wheel, even though Beachbody does it all for us. Um, and they quickly fizzled out. And I was left starting over again, um, which taught me you can't ever stop inviting to the business. You can keep building your challenge groups and making money and commissions, but you can't stop inviting to the business because growing your team is where it's at. So anyways, I had those coaches. Then I'm so close. I had like 12 discount coaches. I had no problem getting discount coaches, but working coaches were a struggle. Um, but I finally got two people to Emerald. But guess what? They were both on my right side. I didn't educate myself. I didn't know I needed an uh, Emerald on my right and an Emerald on my left to become a Diamond coach. So for months, I was technically, in my mind, a Diamond, but not, not properly a Diamond. So I had to invest time again. Um, 
I just kept feeling like hiccup over hiccup, and I started like thinking like, is this meant to be? Like, if it's this hard, is it really meant to be? And um, I just came to the conclusion that whether it was hard or not, it had to be. This had to be. This is the answer for me and my family. And I wasn't going to let that go. And that's like where Rosa spoke about your why being strong enough. If your why is to like take financial burden off your mom, which is mine, or to live your life by design, or to retire your husband um, if he's working up north and you never get to see him and he never gets to see your kids. I don't believe that's the kind of life we were called to live. I really don't, where we're slaving our butts off and never getting to be with those that matter to us. That sucks. And there is a better way, and we have the better way. So I couldn't quit, and I won't quit. Um, so I just kind of realized that I had to keep going. No matter what hurdle was going to come my way, I had to keep jumping those hurdles and carrying on and actually looking forward to the next one because I knew I could tackle it and I knew I could take it. Um, so um, how did I do that, though? I honestly just started living out loud. I put me, me so much on my page. Like, my page is literally like a reality show of my life. I hold very little back. Everyone knows who I am on my page. They know to expect me to be a dork because I am a dork. I'm not put together on any level, though I try. Um, and I'm just, I'm just authentic. And that's what draws people in. And for each of us, it's going to be a different thing that's going to draw people in. But that's what you want to do is in that following of people that, that want to be like you and know you and have relationship with you. And it's, it's incredible. So, um, it took me six months of really trying until I got to Diamond. And let me tell you, I took a picture, I took a selfie of me when I read my name or when they read the name out loud on the national wake-up call and I posted it all over my page and on my personal page because I was so proud. And it's not like Diamond's the be-all and end-all, but getting there was so hard. And it laid the groundwork and the foundation for where I need to go now, which is Star Diamond and beyond. Um, and it's just a matter of never letting anything get in your way. There's no excuses. Your why has to be bigger than any excuse you could ever have. So that's, that's my thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karina. Um, I'm just wondering if you guys can hear me better with my earphones in. Just let me know. It does sound better. The thing is, Karina, the most powerful thing that you said, I think, was your why has to be bigger than any of your excuses. And at the end of the day, yes, we have obstacles, but they can turn into excuses into our mind, or in our mind, sorry. Um, I shared with you guys my why. These are my three amazing babies, and I just, I want, firstly, time with them. I want my husband to have time with them. And I want to give them every opportunity that I possibly can. I'll share with you guys my first vision board that I made. After I established my why, it was very early in my coaching career, I was lucky that I established my why so early. Barbie really pushed me to establish a strong why before I really even started coaching. And I'm really grateful for that um, because it's what powered me through when things got tough, when my baby would not sleep at night and I still had to get my training done and get my work done the next day. Um, but this was my first vision board. I established a vision for what I wanted, not only for my business, but also for my life. And this vision really helped to personally through the obstacles that I had. So I told you guys some of the obstacles that experience. I had a newborn baby. It, my baby was two days old as a coach, and I started training that day as well. Um, my husband's a police officer, and he's on shift work. So it's four days on, four days off, and he's at work. We don't see him. Like, he he works long mm -hmm. days, and he has to do all of that stuff. So our home is very kind of helter-skelter in terms of schedule. Um, it's right and so all of these things and all of these reasons that I could have to take a back seat um, to take my foot off the gas 
but the reason that I've held on is because I have this vision and I know that the only difference between me and where I am and Barbie and where she is is the work and time. So what I really want to encourage you guys to do is just to trust the process, trust the training, trust what your coach is telling you that it takes to get to where you want to go and be persistent, keep going, know why you're going there, and just don't stop. Along the lines of the theme at Summit, just never give up. That's it, guys. That's all I have for you. I don't know if you guys have any questions or anything, or if you can hear me. I'm hearing the audio is a bit choppy. Okay. All right, so that was a short call today, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you want to hang back for a bit, that's cool. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll be around for a little bit, and I'll just look at the chat to see if there's anything anybody wants to say.